Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about the what and why of post CSS. Now, we went over sort of the very most basics in the series introduction. However, this video is going to give you a little bit more in depth about what you can really accomplish with post CSS and what we're going to be covering. So, check it out. Let's get going right now. So now that post CSS has been out for a little bit, the benefits and improvements over other systems are becoming even more and more obvious. So you might be wondering why I need another sort of CSS system. I'm probably already working with something like SAS or Stylus, or maybe you're still working with less. So why do you need post CSS? And you don't really need post CSS, but it makes your life a lot easier. Uh, basically, can you imagine just totally forgetting that prefixes ever existed? So when SAS first came out, it was sort of wild that you could use something like Compass and have all of these uh, mix-ins for every single CSS3 property that exists. So you could use a mix-in for border radius or something like that, and then it would take care of all of the prefixes for you. Well, with PostCSS and its packages, you can sort of forget that things like prefixes exist at all. So you can type your CSS, your SAS, your stylist, your less, whatever. You can type your code as you would have typed it uh, years ago without any sort of idea that a prefix existed. So you could type something like border hyphen radius and then define it with the properties just like you would any other CSS property. And then the auto prefixer package for post CSS will just come in and fill in the prefixes for you. Now auto prefixer is just one of tons of post CSS packages. Now to understand a little bit about what post CSS does and why it's different from a preprocessor is that basically it looks at your CSS and with syntax in your CSS, no special sort of mix-ins and stuff like that, with syntax in your CSS, it then processes your CSS to then modify it. So for instance, like I said, we have border hyphen radius, and you define it just like normal, like without any sort of prefixes at all, and then the output is with all of the prefixes, and you didn't have to think about it. So that's really the best part about things like post CSS is that it just adds nice little fixes and it, it allows you to use things like uh, the next iterations of CSS, the CSS that you can't quite use yet but is in, in flux in development. It allows you to use those features so your CSS will be future compatible. However, it's going to be currently compatible as well because after it's run through post CSS, it's going to be outputting everything you need to have it working today. So it's important to note that post CSS is really just sort of a wrapper for additional packages. On its own, post CSS isn't getting you a whole lot. What it is getting you is the ability to use a whole bunch of different plugins. So as you can see there on post CSS's GitHub page, they have plugin packs. They have various future CSS syntax plugins, fallbacks, language extensive like language language extensions like using things like mixins and variables and, and things like that and maps. Um, then there have a various color packages, images and font packages, grids. In fact, the lost grid written by Corey Simmons is my personal favorite grid in the world. It, it is awesome. And then we have things like optimizations, shortcuts, and other sort of stuff, and even analysis. So you can get, and linters that link your CSS with syntax styles like BEM, and can even give you a CSS statistics. We have reporters, and there's some even some fun things here that are just sort of interesting. So there's like Canadian style sheets to just essentially change things like color to uh, color with a U and uh, important is turned to sorry. Okay, so we have Canadian style sheets and things like that that are just sort of fun. But in addition, where post CSS really shines is in these packs, things like StyleLint, Rucksack. Rucksack is just an awesome collection of shortcuts. Pre-CSS, which allows you to use SAS-like uh, CSS. So it's essentially to use SAS-like syntax within your CSS. Um, and then a pre, uh, CSS Next, which allows you to use future CSS features today and just compiles them correctly. Uh, like you can see, Rucksack says it's a little bag of CSS superpowers. And there's some awesome little helpers in here. 
So basically, why do you need post CSS? Well, post CSS is great because you can use it with your existing system. You can use it without your existing system, but basically it just makes your life easier, which is what you set out to do in the first place by learning any of the preprocessors in general. So check out post CSS. We're going to get into a bunch of stuff about how to add it to your workflow right now. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. If you like this video, please check out some of the other Level Up Tutorials videos. We have lots of exciting playlists from Meteor to Angular to Polymer 1.0 and even some web design stuff using Sketch App. There's new videos every week and check out the video descriptions for awesome ways that you can help support this channel in creating free tutorials.